I am Alexis Kishansky. I am an associate professor at the University of Washington and Seattle Children's Research Institute, and my lab started in 2015. My name is Bjorn Kafsak. Uh, I'm an associate professor at Wild Cornell Medicine in New York, and uh, my lab uh, studies malaria parasites, and uh, it was also study started in 2015. I'm uh, Vasant Lederen, and I'm an associate professor at the University of Georgia uh, and at the Center for Tropical and Emerging Global Diseases. Uh, my lab started in 2013, and my lab also studies malaria parasites. Loneliness? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think we were, you know, we were all at the same MPM meeting that, uh, that year in 2015. And, you know, I think several of us felt that either, you know, having just started a lab or having had a lab for a couple of years, that, we're really missing mechanisms for transmitting all the experience and, and that people gain when they when they start up a lab, and that everybody was sort of starting from scratch each time. And we thought it would be a good idea if we came up with some sort of mechanism where we could uh, pass on some of the things that we were learning at the time, and also kind of share knowledge as to like how things are done in different places, right? Look, not every university kind of does the same exact thing. Maybe some things are done better at University of Washington or Wild Cornell or UGA or wherever, right? So that information transmission often doesn't happen. And it's such a steep learning curve going from a postdoc to an assistant professor. And uh, for me personally, it was like, there was nobody here at the center who was an assistant professor. So you know, you often get the answer when you ask questions, oh, it'll sort itself out. And you're like, this is a crisis. How will it sort itself out? <laughs> and this happens like every day and you're like, oh no. So this, like when we're having lunch and kind of talking about some of these issues, it was like clear that we need to do this. Yeah, I really feel like, especially over the course of MPN, right, which is several days long, I think, you know, like it was really sort of um, helpful to sort of these things that everybody was like, oh, yeah, that'll work itself out, you know, in my surroundings, which also was very senior faculty heavy at the time. And, you know, then I I realized like, oh, well, somebody else just, you know, um, worked that out last week. Right? So I want to hear from that person. I don't want to hear from somebody who worked it out 20 years ago and doesn't really remember the story and did so in a really different landscape. And so it just seemed like, you know, we were going to be each other's best resources. And, um, you know, why would we we not harness that? And then, you know, also, I think for me, there was um, sort of a, a forward looking thing where I said, you know, not that not that it's bad, and I don't think we're you know one of these um, fields that's like caustic or anything like that. But I think sort of looking forward, I was like, well, maybe if we could establish these relationships and and friendships, you know, early on, I think you know some of the pitfalls that maybe our more senior colleagues had run into in the long run, where you know people were competing with one another and and doing so, and you know maybe not the best way for the advancement of, of science and collaboration, you know, maybe we could sort of set up some, some foundations that would sort of um, prevent us all from falling down that path, like in the long run. That was a, that was a big motivation. Like how can we all figure out how to make our field the best landscape for all of us, right? And how can we all succeed together in sort of answering these really cool unexplored questions? You know, I think what, Alexis pointed out was is very true that that sort of uh, just sharing that um, the troubles and the positives right not just like you know kind of got gets trouble heavy a little early like crisis heavy in the beginning uh, because you're not sure where you are and what you're doing kind of uh, situation uh, but it builds some trust right oh this person gave me this advice and it actually worked. Right. So that trust building exercise was 
which is somewhat unexpected in ways, and it's still paying off like many years later, not just, it paid off then obviously, but it's still paying off. You come at it with a point of view like, oh, I know this person and this person I know wants the best for me. It also gave me the opportunity to meet a bunch of other junior investigators that I'd never met before. And that before then I didn't have particular reason to, to engage with below besides, you know, sitting at a lunch table at, at a conference. And I th- you know, it built lots of relationships uh, through the different YIPS meetings that continue now and that I benefit from, you know, every other month, I would say. So we were really fortunate in that um, <clears throat> the year we tried to put this together, uh, Kirk Deitch uh, was the lead organizer for MPM, and he's here at Wild Cornell, and his office is just down the hall from mine. And so uh, that gave us access to basically all the organizational resources that go into or, you know, setting up MPM, including all the lists of past attendees. And so we really used that list to sort of uh, email faculty that had been read, that had previously registered uh, and spread the word that we were, we were looking to do this and uh, also looking to invite postdocs that were about to go on the market. I think also with the four of us sort of geographically distributed as well, like we, that was really a plus because we had sort of our own networks that we could reach out to on top of that. But, you know, I think we didn't know how widespread our message would be. And, you know, I think, I I think I sort of came at it was like, oh, I like these three other people. So if it's just the four of us, like, that'd be fun too. (laughs) Yeah, and we also didn't know what was going to work or not work of all yeah. the, the different topics that we covered. You know, there were there were some topics that we thought were, oh, you know, like we'll have this in the list. And then really 10 minutes into it, we're like, okay, we're done with this. This is not that interesting. And then, you know, there were others which, you know, over the years we've learned are really, a, there's big interest. The biggest one is sort of bringing the program officers to this YIPS meeting. And I mean, I gained so much insight into the NIH grant process uh, through the, the uh, advice from, from Glenn and Deirdre that it was really fantastic. Like I've talked to Glenn and uh, Deirdre a bit over the years about this and for them it was really useful as well because they also got a really nice kind of where does the field lie, How, where is it going kind of look which they you know, they get from conferences, but this was a very up close and personal. And I would add one more topic to it uh, that was completely unexpected. And going in, I thought, uh, was social media. Like, I still remember Bill Sullivan's talk on how to harness social media, which I was completely not on it. I was like, whatever. But Bill Sullivan telling me and showing me what it is, like now I'm like recruiting people through Twitter, right? So, <laughs> and discovering things papers outside my field that I normally would not have come across, right? So those are things that Bill really pointed out, which kind of made an impression on me. There's some- Lauren set up some sort of like a um, poll. sharing so- site and poll. And then I think when we had ideas, we'd like stick a post-it on your, your- <laughs> project management site. I don't even remember what it was, but I, think, I, mean, I sort of remember like randomly having ideas throughout, you know, the six months or whatever leading up to it. And um, I maybe didn't admit this at the time, but it would be like, I'd get really stuck on something and be like, <laughs> Hey guys, how about we have a topic on this? Cause I'm gonna be stuck in a few months, you know, like for me. We just did exactly what Alexa said, just set up, so we set up a poll that people voted on. We just kind of did it that way. I mean, some things are obvious, right? Grants, publications, uh, that sort of stuff is pretty standard. But some of the others were sort of things that I was struggling with or she was struggling with or Bjorn was struggling with, like that sort of. Um, and then nobody voted for what I was struggling with. I'm like, oh, no, this is a me problem now. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I mean, recruitment was another big topic that when you're starting a lab, right, that that, that we spend a good amount of talking about recruitment. 
I think the biggest thing that came out of it was exposure in the wider community and recognition that we were invested in this field uh, sort of for the long term. I mean, there was sort of like a, a um, acknowledgement that I was actually at this place in my career and part of this community, right, as somebody who's who sort of didn't do their graduate work in this um you know, topic and community. I sort of knew what I wanted the lab to look like and, and feel like. And I was certainly really excited about many of the scientific topics, but it gave me sort of a grounding to be like, oh, there's all these people who I just respect so much. And I'm so excited to watch what their labs will grow into. And like, they think I'm doing the same thing as them. So it must be true. You know, I think there was just like a, a confidence building. I think for me, it was... Uh maybe a little more simple, uh, like a group of friends and mentors who are my peers, who are literally at the same stage that I am, um, that I still lean on a little bit, right? And that that sense that you're part of this community that is supportive. I think that sort of understanding that, okay, this is a community I can trust and which sort of wants me to succeed as well, right? Just as much as I want them to succeed. And so that community and those friendships, not just people in malaria, but people outside of malaria as well, right? So there are people that I count as my friends now. So that really came out of the yips, which I would say for me was completely unexpected. I did not really think, other than like advice, I did not think that there would be this community and peer group that I can kind of talk to. Yeah, I, I remember specifically feeling at the end of it that, like, I think there are very few things that I've done where the I got so much payoff from the amount of work that went into it. Because, you know, it took some work to organize, but not all that much. You know, it's fi- finding rooms and spaces and inviting people and coming up with topics. And But overall, it really was a huge payoff. And one big thing I remember from that first meeting was the reassurance I got that everyone else has that same sense of anxiety that I was feeling. You know, I remember sitting there in that room and I was like, oh, okay, good. This is perfectly normal. <laughs> I'm, I'm really excited that it sort of the, the structure of it became where it really does pass from sort of like to a new group of PIs with sort of some overlap. I think that structure is really great. So, you know, mirroring sort of how MPM is organized, but it really gives new incoming PIs, again, exposure and the ability to make these uh, connections and and really, keep, I think, keeps it alive and moving. I, I think it's probably gotten a little more structured because I would, I, I'm not going to speak for Bjorn and Alexis, but I kind of felt like I was not sure what exactly I was doing. You know, in the sense that it was just kind of doing things and kind of building a bicycle as we were trying to ride kind of situation, right? Um, but now it feels like kind of there's some parts there that can be kind of plug and play. Yeah, I think it's evolved sort of maybe an expected amount in seven or however many years it's been, right? Like, I think it's it it isn't like so dramatically different that you can't recognize it, but also, I mean... There are natural um, new challenges. And I mean, I wasn't there, but I would imagine that, you know, I think there is a really unique set of challenges of navigating the last few years um, as a new faculty member, right? And um, I found myself, I don't know what the discussion looked like, but I found myself thinking a lot about that um, and um, just so... I find myself like on a weekly basis thinking, wow, this would be so much harder if my lab was even just a couple of years younger. A yips dance party. <laughs> yeah. yeah we, show, we... Show, the, show the old folks how it's really done, you know? like. I think the old folks in this field are really good at it, though. Yeah, they are, actually. <laughs> yeah I mean, I think that, you know, maintaining the social aspect of YIP. So you're having specific times for social interaction, because I think that really there's a big benefit there in addition to the organized parts. 
I, I guess my advice is sort of what I always tell people is like, don't take our advice too seriously, right? This is for you and the community you want to build. I, I really think like on the community building parts of it, it should be your vision and I'm excited to see it.